So I'm going to show you my rig first. This is Bad Cat, Black Cat, 30R, 212 combo. 212 means two 12-inch uh, speakers. It's got vintage 30 selection speakers, and R stands for reverb. Um, this is uh, Marshall JCM 800. I think it's from like 1986. I don't know. And he uses Orange Tiny uh, Terror to uh, boost up the signal or use it as clean. And he's he's got a Avatar Contemporary 212 open back cab with. Uh, Celestion V30s. Mainly I use um, Janelle ASAT Classic Blues Boy with uh, Semi Hollow. I, I mainly use this guitar. Sometimes I use um, Gibson Blissful Faded Series or uh, this Fender Telecaster. It's Mexican made, but I mod it with the uh, US Electronics. Before you know it, he was, you know, really putting himself out there. Um, right, wrong, or indifferent, Devin went and did this. This was a, a, a real uh, passion that he felt that he wanted to do. Um, and I think it was a very, very important part of his healing process. Um, you know, whether it was a coping mechanism or a healing mechanism or what, this was, he was very, very passionate about it. And he made it happen. And he continues to make it happen. Normally he is very busy studying and working as a part-time job uh, at elementary school. But I think uh, even though he is busy, he never forgets to practice music. So I think it helps um, Devon for everything. Yeah. It was level one to five, depending on the hospital, it's like one to three or whatever. But um, if you're level four to five in the hospital, I was at Westford Psychiatric Hospital. Um, you get what you call a pass. And the pass allows you to go outside of the hospital. They give you certain hours or and the first pass I had was inside of the hospital property with my family for an hour. My cat, Meeple, visited me as well, a two hour drive. It was pretty cool. But it felt really good the first time I actually got out of the hospital for a pass. I felt really good. You know, I was actually outside, not fences everywhere, and you know, uh, I felt free. Felt really good. I would play my guitar quietly in the corner, and um, this girl came and sat next to me. She said, um, <clears throat> Wow, you, you played a guitar very well. And I said, thank you, thank you. And, and she grabbed my notebook and she started reading my lyrics and everything. And she says, um, can you play me this song? This song, I like the words. I said, yeah, sure. So I played her that song and uh, you know, after the song, she, she started crying. She said, thank you, thank you so much. You know, I, I've been having a rough time and stuff like that, but you know, I feel better. And I, and I said, well, thank you for listening to me. And it went on for a couple of months, and <clears throat> she turned 19, and she had to transfer to uh, another hospital, adult care hospital. So she uh, she left. She gave me the phone number there. Um, a week or two later, I called, and I said, "Can I can I speak to um, Katie Ramey, please?" And the nurse who picked picked up the phone goes, "Who?" And I said, "Katie Ramey. She's." She's young, she just got to the hospital like a week or two ago. And the nurse goes, um, I'm sorry, but Katie Ramey um, killed herself, you know, a week or two ago. And I was just speechless. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, I was, I was 
very heartbroken and everything. But um, <clears throat> her life was very important to my, uh, me, and it meant something for me. So if if you know if you if you um if you think your life doesn't mean anything or whatever, it's it's not true because it means you know everybody's beautiful. You know it doesn't matter if you're gay or lesbian or you know Japanese or Chinese or you know American or if you have STDs or whatever. Your life is important and you you all are beautiful. So just don't forget that. All right. Um, this next song is uh, called The Girl Who Holds the World's Fan on Her Shoulders. I'm going to dedicate this song to Katie Ramey and all of you who came and people who made this um, possible for us. Thank you so much. You know, Devin's doing real well. He's in school, he's got a job, um, and, he's, and he's playing his music and he's busy. And that's, you know, and I know, I know I mean, we've talked with him and he, he still struggles with, with depression and, and you know, real serious stuff. But he's been taught the tools and he's using those tools and coping. And, and that's, you know, that's an inspiration for a lot of people that, and he can get out in an audience and, and be able to demonstrate that and, and foster that. You know, that's a great thing. The appreciation makes the ordinary extraordinary. And um, that's why like when you're a kid, um, you look at the grass and, you know, say, hey, the grass is really green. Wow, why is it so green? Look at the sky. It's so big. It's so blue. Look at the butterflies, the dragonflies. They can fly. That's amazing. And you're so, like, into the moment and, you know, you forget what's surrounding, and, you know, you forget what's going on. You focus on what's, what's there now. But then you get older and you realize that many things are impossible and you start not appreciating things around you and you forget to be in the moment and that's when, you know, sadness kind of creeps into your life, I guess, and all this whole depressive stuff. But um, it, it, you, the moment is happening every time, you know. Like when you're, if you play soccer or baseball or if you play music or if you're drawing something or whatever, you're doing something and you're really into it. I think that's what being in the moment is about, being mindful of surroundings and you're appreciating what's around you. That's appreciating the ordinary and that makes everything extraordinary. Thank you so much. Have a good night.